The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hiya, Mr. Marvin. I was just talking to Casey about you. Uh Uh-oh, a few not-so-gentle remarks? Oh, no. On the contrary, Tony, Ethelbert admires your gift of gas. Yeah, Mr. Marvin, you've got such a nice way of putting things. You make them words sound so important. Oh, I'd like to take credit for that, but I, I can't very well. You know, one of the things I repeat most would sound important no matter who said it, Ethelbert. Yeah? Now, what's that, Mr. Marvin? That Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Treasure Cave. Blue Note Cafe. Leaning happily on the bar is Captain Logan, chief of the Homicide Bureau. And Ethelbert, the head bartender, regards him with a look of unconcealed envy as... uh... You and Casey are going to have three whole days at Red Lake, Captain, with nothing to do but fish, huh? That's the program, Ethelbert. We're driving up there tonight. Some guys have all the luck. Yeah. It's the first time that Casey and I have both been free at the same time. (laughs) I'm finally getting a chance to make the lug eat some of those tall fish stories he tells us. That I'd like to see happen. Yeah. To hear Casey tell it, he's a better fisherman than even uh, Jonah. Yeah. Jonah? Yeah, didn't he catch a whale named Moby Dick or something, I think? Moby Dick. Stethelbert, I always learn things from you. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, well, here comes... Hi, guys. Hello, Hi. Casey. Uh, here's a stool for you, Miss Williams. Oh, All thanks, right. Captain. Uh, Captain Logan's just been telling me you and him are driving to Red Lake tonight, Casey. Yeah, uh, the Red Lake trip's off. Uh, huh? Yeah. City desk just handed Ann and me a special assignment, Logan. We've got to be in Titustown tomorrow. Is he kidding, Miss Williams? No, Captain. We're going to Titustown. Casey, I bet you asked for that assignment. You know darn well if we went fishing together, I'd call the bluff you've been making for years. I never believed you knew a trout fly from a bad floor. Hold and... it, Junior. You and I are still going fishing tomorrow. Uh, uh, you're going to Titustown? Huh? Lake Hopatobi. One of the best fishing spots in this state is only a few miles from Titustown, pal. Hey, that's right. You and Casey can leave tonight as you planned, Captain, and spend the whole morning on the lake. And I'll catch a train tomorrow, and that'll get me into Titustown around noon. Casey will meet me. We'll clean up our assignment, then I'll rejoin you at the lake, pal. Oh, but Toby is a fishing spot, from what I've heard. Sure hey, is. uh, ain't Treasure Cave near Titustown? Just outside the village. Treasure Cave? Yeah, it's our special assignment. You're going to investigate the mysterious death there? Investigate? Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're not cops, Ethelbert. Miss Williams will simply write an on-the-spot feature story for our Sunday edition. I'll make with a camera. Well, you're a cop, Captain Logan. How do you figure them mysterious deaths in Treasure Cave? Treasure Cave is near Titustown. All I know about them is what I read in the papers, which are usually wrong. Is that so? Why, Logan's right, Annie. Yeah. Because we poor newspaper mugs have to base most of our stuff on what the cops tell us. Is that? (laughs) (laughs) Casey, do you figure them guys found dead in Treasure Cave were just murdered normal, or uh, do you dope it as the sinister work of supernatural forces? Sinister work of what? The last dead guy, the archaeologist, had been drowned, according to the doctors, but his body was in a part of that cave that is at least half a mile from the water. Oh, surely you don't believe in ghosts, Ethelbert. No, but how do you explain the other guy who was killed in that same part of the cave about a year ago and the guy before him? Well, they were obviously murdered. Strangely murdered, I read. Oh, you certainly got fancy bump off. I'll say. One man had been hacked up with a cutlass several hundred years old, and 
The other had a bullet in his head that could have been fired only from an early 18th century muzzle-loading pistol. Which weapons, Captain, were the kind once used by pirates. Uh. And dead pirates are supposed to haunt that cave because they're garden treasure they hid there. Yeah, if one of the good guys in my department could be detailed to that backwoods Titus Town neighborhood, he'd clean up the case in 24 hours. Oh, you're going to Titus Town, pal? We're on vacation to fish. Mm. But if the boss of your department was one of its good guys... Nuts. Casey, maybe you and Miss Williams can solve the treasure cave mystery. Well, of course, we're only amateurs, Sherlock, so it may take us a little over 24 hours to crack it. To maybe even 25, Annie. Mm, maybe 26, Casey. After all, we haven't Captain Logan's long experience. That's right. It'll be embarrassing to the captain when you bust the case when it's known he was up there with you and didn't do nothing but fish. Oh, well, we'll keep that out of the paper. We've covered Logan before. We'll do it again. you got to protect your friends. I see. All of you behind the needle, huh? <laughs> I can't just take it. <laughs> uh, Casey, I can't get mixed up in that treasure cave thing officially, but well, I'll go there with you and Miss Williams tomorrow if you won't tell anybody who I am. Okay, pal, it's a deal. we got a call first on the man who owns the cave, Captain. Mr. Lefton. He doesn't like unpleasant publicity, but he's an old friend of our managing editor who finally got his permission to let Casey and me go over the place. Now, this Lefton's a pretty rich guy here. He's a retired broker who became a gentleman farmer. Fraser caves at one end of his farm. I'll take along when you call on him. Now, now, Casey, if we're going to get some early morning fishing, we've got to hit the road. Okay, let's go. We'll drop you off to your pub, Annie. Thanks. Good night, Ethelbert. Good night, pal. So long, Ethelbert. So long. Oh, gee... A nice fishing trip and a swell murder mystery, too. Some people have all the luck. Don't tell me, Casey. Nobody ever caught fish with the wiggler lure you used this morning. Oh, is that so? Well, I've caught fish and plenty with that wiggler lure. Uh. Well, it didn't work this morning because every time I got a near strike, you were splashing around with that... Pork rind bait. Pork rind's the best bass bait in the world. That's so. Why'd you catch something with it? Then? Not only because Casey, you were... Captain, what? please. Huh? huh? Women are supposed to be gabbers, but no two gals ever extended a two-word subject like no fish into an hour-long argument. <laughs> How about the two-word subject long skirt, Annie? Or a popular one-word subject, men. If you men were gentlemen, you wouldn't gang up like that on a lady. Oh, oh right. gang up one. Well, here's Lefton's house. Come on, let's pile out. Hey, some place the guy has. Oh, I'll say. Beautiful house and a model farm and the ocean practically in his backyard. Yeah, all and... we're interested in, Annie, is the cave he owns. Now, let's go in and introduce uh, ourselves. Casey, remember, I don't want to be known as a city cop here. Oh, oh okay. Here, carry my camera and equipment case. Carry uh, Sure. Sure. We'll say you're my assistant photographer. Oh, swell, pal. Uh, wait a minute. Remember, I demand a respectful attitude from underlings. So please address me hereafter as master. Uh, nuts. <laughs> oh, hey, a woman's just come out the door. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, how do you do? We have an appointment with Mr. Lefton. You're the newspaper people? Uh, yes, the Morning Express. Our managing My brother edit- told me to expect you. I'm Miss Lefton. Oh, nice to know you. Uh, this is Miss Williams. How do you do? How do you uh, do? Cap- uh, Mr. Logan, my assistant. <laughs> and my name is Casey. Uh, please come in. Thank you. My brother's in the living room here. Basil? Oh, yes, Sider. The newspaper people are here. Oh. Uh, Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, Mr. Logan. This is Mr. Lefton. Sit down. Thank you. Ida, uh, get Ramsey. Very well, Basil. Uh, excuse me. Ramsey is my superintendent. He'll take you people to the cave. Frankly, I deeply resent the invasions of my privacy caused by the so-called mystery murders in Treasure Cave. So please get your material as quickly as possible. Yes, we will, Mr. Lefton. I suppose the stories given to the press associations by the county sheriff's office are substantially correct. Insofar as I know, and all I know is that during the past year and a half, three men have been found dead in the cave. According to a legend, Mr. Lefton... Pirate treasure is hidden in the cave. That's only a legend, Miss Williams. <clears throat> Have you any theory to account for the recent murders, Mr. Lefton? I think they're the work of a madman. Why? Because they were so utterly purposeless. None of the victims were robbed and they had nothing in common. Sheriff Fargo agrees with me. Oh. The three victims had nothing in common, huh? Nothing. But all had your permission to be in the cave. Yes, I've never thrown it open to the general public. Well, then your permission is one thing they had in common. 
That can scarcely account for their death, uh, Mr. Excuse Casey. me, uh, Basil? Yes, Ida? Mr. Wyler's on the phone. Will you talk to him? What does he want? The same old thing? Yes, he says he's willing to increase his last offer by $2,000. Tell him I say again that the land isn't for sale. Why don't you tell him? I'm tired of telling him. Anyway, it's your concern more than mine. This property is going to belong to you. I'll tell him. Forgive me for shouting at you, Ida. Did you send for Ramsey? Yes, he's on his way here. Excuse me. I apologize. This man, Wyler, owns the farm adjoining mine, and for the past two years... He's been trying to buy a strip of my land. I'm completely fed up with him. Yeah, I guess we've all met pests like that. Mr. Lefton? Oh, yes, Ramsey. Your sister told me to come right in, sir. Quite right, quite right. These are the newspaper people I told you about. Miss Williams, Mr. Casey, Mr. Logan. This is Ramsey, who runs my farm. How do you Very glad to know you. He'll take you to the cave. All right. We'll get going right away, Mr. Lefton, and thanks a million. Not at all. Take them by boat, Ramsey. It's the best way. Yes, sir. Come with me. Okay. Thanks again, Mr. Lefton. Our story will continue in just a moment. And now, a word about beer insurance. Beer insurance? How does that work? Easy. Select a good, tasty brew, then insist on having it delivered in glass bottles. In glass bottles? Yes, in glass bottles. Because glass bottles and glass bottles only can bring you beer and ale as it comes from the brewery, unaffected by any foreign taste or flavor. Beer that's brewery bright. Beer in glass. And now we have a new kind of bottle. The Anchor Glass One-Way Bottle. It requires no deposit. No return to the store. When it's empty, dispose of it as you would any food container. You are the first and last to use it. It saves space in the icebox. Easy to open, easy to drink from. It's always in good taste. And it protects that real brewery flavor. As only glass can protect it. Yes. The revolutionary new Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle is sweeping America. For perfect flavor, demand beer in glass bottles. For extra convenience, demand your favorite brand in the new Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Get us to the cave in just a few minutes. If it took you folks overland, take longer. Cave entrance is near the beach, Ramsey, isn't it? It's right off the water, Mr. Casey. The scientific fellers who came here told me Treasure Cave was hollered out by the sea. That's why it ain't a pretty cave like some saw in Kentucky when it was soldiering down there. Oh, did you go through Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, Mr. Ramsey? Yes, ma'am. They tell me folks come from all over the world and pay big money to go through that place, but the hole under them cliffs I'm taking you to is nothing but a dark old tunnel. How long have you been out of the Army, Ramsey? Two years. Got too old. Come right back here and Mr. Lefton's sister gave him an old job back. His uh, sister keeps house for him? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ever since his wife died 20 years or more ago, I figure Miss Ida got married or never got married herself because she thought she ought to take care of him and his daughter. Uh, Lefton has a daughter? Uh, she's had three husbands, all no good. She's supported on her father's money. Now he's paying for a third divorce so she can marry a fourth bum. The old man's crazy about his only kid, so she gets anything he's got and throws it away. Mm. Guess he has plenty. We heard him refuse to sell a part of his farm at any price this afternoon. That guy, Wyler? Yeah. Uh, The boss won't sell the cave. The cave? It's uh, on the strip of land Wyler wants to buy. It ain't worth much. Guess that's why he willed it to his sister. That no good daughter of his gets everything else when he dies. Uh... You can see the cave entrance now at the foot of the cliff. Oh, that big hole there? Uh-huh. Engine Sam's waiting there. He'll take you to where them murders were committed. Engine Sam? Oh, Sam's what you call character. That's him standing on the dock there. Big guy. Weighs over 250 and none of it fat. He killed a guy with just one punch. He killed a man? Yeah. Set him up for manslaughter, but Sam got a full pardon. He came out of jail about the same time I got out of the army. Hey, Sam! Oh, I'm the... Got them newspaper people aboard? Huh? Go line. I've fastened both. Uh, here goes. I got 
I'll help you out later. Oh, thanks, Mr. Randall. Uh, Sam, uh, this is Miss Williams, Mr. Casey. <laughs> No, don't ask Scott's name. Oh, Logan, my assistant. Oh, sure, <laughs> Logan. Oh, don't forget my equipment, Logan. Yeah, Mr. Casey. I bring lantern here for each. Take there. Much obliged. Thank you. Leave you folks now and get back on the job. Much obliged for your help, Ramsey. I'll thank my boss. Watch out for him, Sam. I watch out, Ramsey. Casey, I don't like this thing here, Sam. Neither do I, Annie. That's a crazy about Ramsey, is it? Where do you people want to go? To Spirit Temple Place, where murders are done? Yes, Sam. Take us to the Spirit Temple. Come. It's dark inside. Use lantern and watch your step. <laughs> Get to the spirit's temple, Sam. So now. Hey, how big is this cave? We've been walking a long time. Half mile. And most uninteresting, just a dark, dreary tunnel. Yeah, certainly no tourist attraction. Cave made by spirits. Ever run into one of those spirits? I hear and see many things in caves that make me afraid. I not go alone to spirit's temple anymore. When did you see and hear those things? After I come back here from prison. Have you told the police about it? I tell Sheriff Fargo. He say I crazy. I go ahead now. Cave gets very narrow here. You follow. Hey, how does that guy strike you, Casey? I think he's nuts or putting on an act. I don't think he's nuts, Morgan. He makes a swell suspect for all three of those murders. Apparently the county sheriff doesn't think so. Sheriffs are sometimes dead of politicians and they are policemen. Too. Dead a mouthful there, eh? I'll tell you. Hey, the cave has gotten there. Yeah, there's only a passage here. It winds around like a corkscrew. What? Step back there. Shine lights on floor. You go downward now. We're watching, Sam. Careful, Yeah, yeah I'm going to be careful. Fine, it is deep. Yeah, now the passage is getting wider. There's a squeeze back there for guys behind the guys our side, Casey. A much tighter squeeze for an Indian sand. This guy's built like a battleship. Hey, we're coming out in a huge chamber. Hey, uh, ceiling must be another feet up. Here is Spirit Temple for men's art. Yeah. Show us where those dead men are found. Oh. Huh. Man killed by pirate sword died here. Oh, the rocks are stained with blood, Kate. Yeah. From man who was drowned lie here. <gasps> the guy who drowned that man outside the cave and then carried him all the way in here must be a big, strong guy, Dan. Extra big and strong. That's what Sheriff Fargo say. But I say, man drowned here in Spirit Temple. There's no water here to drown a man in. Spirits bring water. Spirits drown that man. I'll believe that after I see his spirit at work. I'm beginning to wonder what kind of a law officer this Fargo is. Hey, good sheriff. He's a good little man. He, my friend. He's obviously your friend. What? Sure, sir. Logan didn't mean anything, Sam. That's just his way. Hey, uh, show us where the third dead guy was found, will you? The one who was shot with the old-time pistol. He was on the other side, behind Temple Alto. Uh, Logan, you've got to take it easy. You can't make cracks about this shirt. I know, I got sore. Why hasn't he put that big guy through the works? Smells like out and out protection to me. To me too. Well, okay, but Sam's watching us. Come on, break up this huddle. Did you call that big rock formation the Temple Alder, Sam? Is that it? That is what it calls. Yeah, it looks like a giant size alder. Yeah, and the rocks around it look like giants praying. Hmm, it's spooky. Here is where a man found with fuller than... Mr. Case, Mr. Alder. What? Look, look, there. 
Oh, a man. Oh, an arrow through his throat. Logan, went clear through. Look at the head of it sticking out. A flint arrow hit. His old engine arrow. Very old. You know this dead man, Sam? Yes. He. Sheriff Fargo. <laughs> Get in the car. Let's think this thing over. You know, we'd better do some thinking after what we've just been told by Sheriff Fargo's chief deputy. I owe Fargo's memory a big apology. He hasn't been missing a bet, case. He said it. Everyone who had access to that cave was checked by the sheriff's office. And Fargo spent hours in the spirit temple searching for leads. That's what he was doing this morning when the coroner says he got that arrow through his throat. He got it because he found a lead. As the others were killed because they'd found something. Oh, the pirate treasure? Yeah, apparently. Just before the first killing, that man, Wyler, tried to buy the cave and legal property rights to anything found on a person's land. Casey, drive out to Wyler's place and let's see what we can find out about him. Oh, it might take too long, Annie. We haven't got much time to waste up here. Drive back to Treasure Cave, Casey. We'll pay another visit to the Spirit's Temple. Check, pal. My idea exactly. But right. we'll stop off first at Lefton's house. Why? Because every murder victim, including Sheriff Fargo this morning had received formal permission from Lefton to prowl through that cave. Yes, you gentlemen and Miss Williams may go again to the cave. Thank you, Mr. Lefton. Ida, will you phone Ramsey's quarters and ask him to take these people by boat? Right away, thank you. I'm terribly distressed by Sheriff Fargo's death. Terribly distressed. He was a friend of mine. I can't get over what happened to Sheriff Fargo, Mr. Casey. He was a friend of mine. Only this morning I took him to the cave in this very boat. So I'm taking you folks now. Did you take all the other murder victims to the treasure cave, Ramsey? In this boat? Yep, all of them. Then turned them over to Injun Sam. No, I go inside cave with none of those men who are killed. They say they want to be alone. So I give them lanterns, then go up to my house on cliff. Shall I guide you again to the spirit temple? No, Sam. We want to be alone. Just give us lanterns. Okay, I give. Then go my house. Quite a few little things those murder victims had in common. Rocks will concentrate on Logan. They're set close together. Yeah. Only a small man could wedge himself between any of these big stones. Sheriff Fargo, like the other murder victims, was a skinny little guy. Another thing they had in common, Casey. Yeah, you know, there's so many rocks around here. There's so many possible passages. Now shine your lantern into each crevice as we're doing it for you. Oh, yeah, try to spot a place that a little guy might squeeze through. Or a little woman. Huh? What? Don't move, any of you. I do. Miss Lefton. You're armed with a very modern weapon this time, Miss Lefton. Yes. A bow and arrow or an ancient pistol can be effective against a single man. But when you left my brother's house, I sensed that I might have to kill all three of you. You reach your private passage through your brother's house? I enter it from a point near the house. No one knows the spot but me. I'm sorry. I must kill you now. Well, uh, uh, you know, spoil the game you've been playing if you bump us off with anything so unfanciful as that rifle, Miss Left. I haven't been playing any games. I've been protecting my personal interests. I discovered this passage while Injun Sam was in prison. And since there are superstitions about this cave, I killed the men who discovered my secret in an unusual way. Your uh, secret is the pirate treasure? No, no, Miss Williams. This passage leads to another cave that extends for endless miles with ceiling of crystal-like gypsum and pillars of white onyx, a fairyland of beauty. People will pay to see it, pay millions, pay me, because I inherit the cave. Why did you have to keep it a secret? Because a battle worth the silver. 
She'd get it if Basil knew the cave was of any value. He'd change his will. You see now why I protected myself in the only way I could? By killing those who threatened the security I've earned? I'll kill everyone who threatened... Oh! I've got her, Logan. You've no. got her. Yes. I've got her. Oh, we've all got her. You what got so you? interested in what you were saying, you came too close to it. Oh, yeah. Here. Here, and for you to hold a gun. When a woman starts to talk, you just got to stop her. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Many a housewife will tell you that she much prefers Fire King oven glass for this very practical reason. Fire King oven glass is so easy to clean. That's it. Fire King oven glass is so easy to clean. It won't absorb the baking stains and odors which are almost impossible to remove from ordinary baking dishes. Now, there's a scientific reason. Fire King oven glass has a special non-porous surface which is literally mirror smooth. This surface is achieved by a closely guarded Fire King secret process. This is just one of the many reasons it will pay you to insist on Fire King oven glass by name, for there is only one genuine Fire King oven glass. Now, you'll find a wide variety of Fire King casseroles, pie plates, and general utility dishes in all sizes wherever household glass is sold. You'll be amazed at the low price, and you'll be charmed by the clean, gleaming, pale blue beauty of Fire King Oven Glass, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. was busted in less than 24 hours, huh, Miss Williams? In less than eight hours, Ethelbert. Eight into 24. Gee, that's only a third of the time Captain Logan said. There were three of us working on it. Three? Well, Casey and Captain Logan makes only two. Oh, oh, you. Yes. There's a few things I don't get, Miss Williams. How did the guy get drowned in that spirit's temple half a mile from water? Well, it doesn't require an ocean to drown a man, Ethelbert. Yeah. A small pail of water will do the job if you first hit him on the head with a rock and then dunk his face. So that's how. That's how. Mm. Clever, you women. Thanks. The only thing I got against women is they talk too much. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Casey and Captain Logan still up at the lake catching fish. They're still at the lake. Not catching fish. And they're talking about no fish. Talking, talking, talking. Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Prime Photographer is directed by John Deep. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Citizen is the Blue Note piano. Daylight saving time ends next week, and the entire country will be on standard time. If your area has not been on daylight saving time, tune in Crime Photographer one hour later. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.